As always, we like to reach outside of the Houston area, even outside of Texas. And we have actually, she has been contributing in the last, uh, I'd say about a year and a half or so. We're going to go right now to the New York City. We hear so much about it. It's one of our most important cities. We have one of the top realtors there with Compass Real Estate. Her name is Victoria Steiner. Victoria, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Bill. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I wanted to make sure we start off the year and get the real scoop as to what is going on in NYC, the Big Apple, because when we hear the news here, it, I, I just don't think we're getting the straight story. You're right there in New York City. First of all, you actually live in the city, right? Yes, I live in Manhattan. So you know the perspective as a realtor and as a resident, and you're through this pandemic, you've been living it and doing the best you can. But let's tell people a little bit about what it's like right now living there in New York City from your perspective. Well, it's definitely cold, and we've had snow and we've had rain. So our temperature fluctuates anywhere between 30s to 50s, 50-degree weather. So it's sunny sometimes, it's rainy. It depends, but we we feel the Northeast corridor of our country really well up, up here and as as far as some of the things that we hear some of the broadcasts i hear is that the once bustling city streets and the i hear some of the reporters saying well normally the streets like super busy but now it's not because of the pandemic what's it really like and i mean as you walk around you're able to walk around the city and and uh go to places and things right well i'll tell you what what happened in march the city we had a lockdown right the only people that were able to work is the essential workers and essential in new york is paramedics firefighters police doctors um, delivery drivers and restaurants and supermarkets so that was it so real estate brokers in new york state i am not an essential worker so i was shut down from march 20th until june 29th i was not allowed to work I wasn't allowed to show property, uh, apartments or houses or anything. And if I was caught, it's a $10,000 fine. And you're also able to lose your license. I know that Texas and Florida are very different about that. Real estate is essential. In New York, it was not. So that created a pent up demand. We were in our apartments. We were looking at uh, real estate. Nothing new was coming on the market. And people, after spending you know months and months in their homes, realized, well, maybe I need a new kitchen. Maybe I need an outdoor space. Maybe we need an extra bedroom for my home office because I've been <laughs> working from home for so long. So when we were released, which was June 29th, we have protocol. We have to have COVID forms uh, done for every time we show an apartment. So we have to submit it to the Department of State for contact tracing. We are masked up. Our clients have to be masked up. It's usually two people per elevator. I wear gloves. I wipe down everything and anything before the visit. And we're very conscious. And if we are exposed, we are supposed to quarantine 14 days. And a colleague of mine was exposed uh, to the virus uh, on Friday and she's still quarantined right now. And then she has to do the test to make sure um, she's okay. So our protocols are very, very strong in New York, but that also ends up the mortgage rates being 2.85 for a 30 year fixed ends up having um, such a huge demand of people that feel like, okay, if we're gonna buy, this is the time. Let, let me go back just a minute before we talk about the market right now. Going back to when it hit, the, there were people that had their homes listed for sale, so they had to stop, right? Correct. All showings had to cease immediately. Oh. And also, we had things in contract. So at the time, we didn't know the protocol. Some buildings were not allowing move-ins. Some buildings were not allowing move-outs. Um, what is the protocol for movers? What's the insurance? What's how safe is to have strangers into your apartment and your building? So those were new parameters. Also, we used to close. We used to have 20 people sitting at the table. You had the attorneys for the buyer and the seller. You had the managing agent. You had the brokers. Now we, believe it or not, close on mobile. All the documents get FedEx. The bank sends in one representative and we're done. That never happened before. We went from 2020 to 2025 within three months. 
Wow. Okay, so let's go to the part where how is the market, and as far as the pent-up demand, I think even what I mentioned as far as the people that had to stop their listing or, or cease the listing, that contributed to pent-up demand. So we've had this demand where you were shut down. Now you have very rigid restrictions for buying and selling, but you're able to be buying and selling and people can buy and sell now. So what's the market like now? Are people buying in New York City? What's going on? The fourth quarter really sparked our luxury market revival. You know, it's been very challenging year for real estate as a whole because we had three months of obviously no business. And the contract signed for the fourth quarter was 232 contracts in the city, right? In Manhattan. We're not talking about Staten Island or Queens or Brooklyn. This is just in New York City. Last year, same time, pre-pandemic, uh, obviously better market, better uh, better um, jobs. We had uh, better facilities like restaurants and New York Knicks and New York Rangers and all that stuff. In that market, we only had 219 contracts signed. So that tells us that we're doing exceptionally well. So far, the fourth quarter of sales volume is over $1.8 billion. Mm. So buyers are out there and they're clearly taking advantage of the softer prices at levels that we've never seen like this before. Just remember, the other thing is the important thing is this market as opposed to last year's market. Um, A lot of our inventory is condominium, which allows uh, foreign foreigners to buy in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. We have no foreigners. It's all people from the United States buying. So it's, let's say, Connecticut buyer, New Jersey buyer, Florida buyer, a Texas buyer. Those are what we're seeing because China can't come, Russia can't come, Europe can't come, UK now is probably going to be on lockdown again. So these are new American buyers. And that's the craziest part because what would our market be like if we actually released it to the world? So the business is very good, and that's not even the normal business where you have people from all over the world buying. All of a sudden, it's super business, but it's all people within the U.S. Is that right? Correct. (laughs) Yeah, and we're saying the same thing in our – so our playground uh, outside of New York where people summer is the Hamptons, right? It's a a small sliver at the edge of Long Island, and they also had a record year because people realized that they need a place of – a retreat they need a second home and to be outside the city in, in terms of a pandemic people also realized that they could work from home and they also realized they could do schooling from home so that and they couldn't travel right no one was no american was able to travel to europe this summer like hot spots like mykonos or south of france or south of italy so everyone stayed home, and those houses, the ten million and up houses, had a record year. Billions and billions were traded this year. So our New York as a whole did exceptionally well, even though we have all these um, requirements. Like right now in New York City, we don't have in-person dining. You cannot eat in a restaurant. You can sit outside. <laughs> and New York was very creative. I'll tell you, the restaurateurs are very creative. They created these um, outdoor cafe s- sittings, and now we have it covered, and now we also have heaters there. So the restaurateurs, I have to give them credit for doing it. The city also gave pieces of their sidewalk and roadways to create these uh, environments. And the summer was, they, my, my daughter called it the 80s summer, where you could go from restaurant to cafe to everything, and you had this feeling of freedom and belonging. It was a very cool effect because it was only people, there were obviously no tourists, so it's only people who are um, from the United States. So it was, it, was, it was lovely to see the city come together that way. That is awesome. And you mentioned, let's talk about the Hamptons just a second. That's one of the areas that you're serving as far as real mm-hmm. estate, even before the pandemic. So you're no stranger to the Hamptons. But for for people that aren't familiar, how far is the Hamptons from New York City, let's say Manhattan? It's about 90 miles. So you got 90 miles and then you have traffic. And to normally. get there, yeah, you could drive. You could take the Long Island Railroad. Oh, you okay. could fly uh, by helicopter or you can fly by a uh, plane, a uh, water plane. So it's very accessible. 
Well, that was one of the first things I heard about New York, other than when everything shut down. The first real estate news I happened to pick up, up on was the exciting activity in the Hamptons and people buying places there. What's your? Let's just take uh, your your numbers are different than ours here for the most part, but let's take let's say the last 10, 20 transactions where people bought something from you, Victoria. What was mm-hmm. the average price of that sale? Curious. Um, seven and a half million. That's the average. And that property, <laughs> that property would have traded a year ago, pre-COVID, w- about twenty percent. So that property would have traded about six five, six two, and now we're getting top dollar because the inventory was absorbed, and so there's not much new development, new construction to pick from. So uh, that's what it created. We called it the COVID premium. I did a million dollar rental. For July and August, I also did a uh, $700,000 rental. Our, our, and those are not, you know, the most expensive. We've had rentals, the $2 million rental, $2.5 million rental for the summer. So those pricings are realistic in today's market. Because the there was no travel, what people ended up doing is just staying out there for May, June, July, and August. So usually it starts around, it's a Memorial Day to Labor Day. So it doesn't oh, okay. really equate per month. The most okay. expensive month is August. It's always been August because that's when people realize, oh, my God, I worked so hard. Let me take the time off. But this year, everybody has been working so hard. So they took all that time and just spent out there and worked from nine to five. And then they were able to be outside and, and to create uh, activities for themselves. Have you seen anybody from Texas buying property in New York City or the Hamptons? Um, You know, we had a lot of Texas buyers prior to COVID that would buy in the mega towers, the $57 billion corridor. And the towers that they were buying was um, the Steinway Tower, which is our brand new tower. It's about $15 million per floor, depending how high you are. Obviously, it goes up to $20, 25 $30 million. They like to be, the Texas people love the views. They want to feel the city. They like to be where the shopping is, and that's usually 57th Street, so that's the corridor. And they like to be near the restaurants and uh, go to the theaters. So that's what they like. They like to come and feel New York. And having that uh, elevation, being on the 50th floor, 60th floor, gives them that wow factor when you walk in and you feel the city. And that's what they keep telling me. That's what their um, criteria is. That's right. And I love your term, feel the city. Victoria, you're doing super work. You're also, I didn't have time to tell people, but you are a often quoted real estate expert. You're in all the media up there in New York City. And, and recently oh. you're our go-to person. We love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank let's, you. Let's yeah. tell people. Every though, time ha- I'm on your show, it feels like two seconds. And I know, I it's know. 10 minutes, but I, I just, you're <laughs> such an amazing uh, orator. I always oh, feel that at this warm connection with you. So thank you for having me on the show. And if anybody has any questions, please reach out. I'm happy to help. Let's tell them how they can reach you, Victoria. Well, they can reach me on our website, which is the the Victoria Steiner team, or personally at my email, which is my name. It's vsteiner at compass.com. And your last name, by the way, is spelled S-H-T-A-I-N-E-R. You can Google her name, Victoria, S-H-T-A-I-N-E-R. You'll be right there. And yeah. Victoria, once again, thank you so yeah. much for being on the show. Thank and we'll you, look, Bill. Look, happy. Look, happy and healthy New Year to you and your family. All the best in 2020. You too. We'll look One. forward <laughs> to 2021. We'll, we'll look 21. forward to hear from you soon for yeah. another report. And in the meantime, thank you so much.